Alright, in this video I want to talk about Euler circuits and to do that we'll have to talk a little bit about multigraphs and also we'll talk about Euler paths and even just regular paths as well. So a little terminology here. Um, the first thing is the notion here of a multigraph and all a multigraph is is just a graph where we allow, allow loops and parallel edges. So remember a loop is just a, a, verte a vertex that has an edge back to itself. Notice from vertex B to C we have these one, two, three edges. I've labeled them as ZX and Y. So we would just say ZXY. Those are what are called parallel edges. We've got multiple edges. Um, let's talk about the notion. Oh, or one other thing to, to notice too. A regular graph is really just a special case of a multigraph. So that's kind of something I think that's worth keeping in mind if you're taking sort of a graph theory class or, or a discrete math class. Uh, just uh, kind of keep that in the back of your head. Um, let's see, so let's talk about the notion of a path. So we could say a path from A to F. Just imagine, you know, I always just thought, hey, if these are like cities and maybe these are streets. So we start at city A, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk along edge R and then end up in city C. So I'll go that way, and then I'll take uh, the uh, street T over to city D. And then I'll go from U to E, along U to E, and then along edge V to F. Now, certainly you could have uh, only listed the edges R, T, U, and V. I think you could have certainly just listed the vertices A, C, D, E, and F. So certainly I've seen all of those done. Um, I don't know. This kind of covers all your bases, uses uh, very descriptive, tells you everything that got used. So this is actually what's known, too, as a simple path. And it's called a simple path because we only the, we used every edge at most once. Uh, so the idea is I didn't use any street more than one more than once. So I could have uh, went down and over just like I did, but maybe I forgot something. So I decide to make sort of a uh, have to walk back to where I started, and then you know maybe then I go back along edge Q and down S, and then over U and back up to V. That would still be a path from A to F because I started at A and eventually I got there, but it wouldn't be considered a simple path. All right. Um, so now the heart of the matter here. Um, so a path and a multigraph that includes exactly once all the edges, but has uh, different starting and finishing vertices. That's what's called an Euler path. And if the path has the same uh, starting and stopping vertex, uh, we call it an Euler circuit. Okay, so here we've got two little separate graphs. Uh, so let's see if we can't find an Euler path here in the one on the left. Okay, so um, suppose Suppose I start here um, at this vertex, and definitely not starting here at random, but uh, let's see, suppose I walk up, so again, we're just trying to use every edge exactly once. I can walk over, back down, maybe I walk al around the little triangle, um, and then we can walk, you know, maybe down this way, and then keep on going down, and up, back up, over, and hey, we've revisited you know the same vertices a few times, but that's fine. We just want to use all the edges exactly once. I can use this last edge. I've stopped down here, so we started here, we finished here. That definitely constitutes uh, an Euler path. So, alrighty, um, let's look at our other graph here too. Notice the only thing that's different is I've basically just deleted this one edge, uh, our the last edge we used. So. Here it doesn't really matter where you start. So suppose we start right in the middle. So we could go along, you know, sort of the square. Maybe we go down the uh, uh, along the bottom, and then back up the right side, and then we could walk, uh, you know, however we want to around the little triangular part. We used every edge exactly once. Uh, we we stopped and started at the same place. So in this case, we found what's called again an Euler circuit. All right, uh, so kind of the natural question maybe is, when do you have Euler circuits and when do you have Euler paths? Well, it turns out it has to do with the degree of the vertices. So remember the degree just has to do with the number of edges leaving a vertex. 
So our vertex at the bottom, we would say, has degree of 2, because it has one, two edges leaving it. Uh, this next one has degree 4, it looks like. The one in the middle has degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, this one has degree 2, degree 2, degree 2, degree 2, degree 2. Hey, notice all of those degrees are even numbers. Uh, and that's actually the necessary and sufficient condition. If all of your vertices have even degree, uh, that graph will have an Euler circuit. And that's the only way it can have an Euler circuit, is if they all have even degree. Okay, and if you think about it, you know, why, why would that be a necessary and sufficient condition? You know, uh, could you prove that, uh, I guess is what I'm saying. So the other, uh, our, our, the other question, I guess, is when would you have an Euler path? Well, again, let's count degrees. So notice this one has degree 2, degree 2. We said this one was degree 6, 2, 2. Uh, this was 4. Notice these have changed, though. This now has degree 3, and this one also has degree 3. This turns out to be the condition uh, to have an, an Euler path. It says all of your vertices have even degree excuse me, they all have even degree except for two of them and those two have to have the odd degree so if you have all even degree except two with odd degree that's when you're gonna have an Euler path and if they all have even degree the vertices that's when you're going to have an Euler circuit. How do you find an Euler path or an Euler circuit, you might ask? Well, that's going to be in the next video. But maybe another natural question is, who on earth cares about Euler paths or Euler circuits? Well, again, maybe a little uh, kind of example here in logistics. So suppose these are you know little buildings and these are streets. And suppose you're the postal worker and you've got to deliver mail along these streets. So maybe, uh, maybe you're required to deliver along this edge, this street, and then you've got to do this, you know, the other edge of that street. So, you know, you've got to do both sides of the street when you deliver the mail. You can't just deliver the mail to one side of the street. Um, so let's see, I think I just about got them all shaded in here. All right. Um, suppose you don't have to deliver mail along the edges. Suppose that's somebody else's responsibility. The idea here is what we can do is we can actually just create a little multigraph. And you know, if you're the postal worker or you're the person paying for the postal worker, um, you want them to do this as as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So it would be nice if you could just park your car somewhere on one side of the street, and then you know, hit every street you have to deliver mail to and then finish back where you started. That way, you know, you haven't really wasted any time. You haven't uh, walked back along streets that you've already delivered mail to. So the idea is each of the intersections, we're going to represent these with little vertices. Okay, so sort of each intersection that we have to walk to. And notice, um, since we have to walk along, you know, sort of both edges of the street, I'm going to connect these intersections with two edges making a multigraph now. So I've got to walk along one edge of the street and also the other edge of the street. So we can create this multigraph. And again, I'm not going to connect these uh, vertices here on the left simply because we don't have to deliver mail over there. So we're going to get this resulting multigraph, and now the question is, well, you know, does this multigraph have an Euler circuit? That to me would be optimal in the sense that you hit every edge of the street exactly once and you finish where you start. Well, all we have to do is just count the degrees. So notice uh, at the top this one has degree 2. I think all the ones along the outside simply have degree 2. And then notice the ones in the middle have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges. So all the ones sort of on the interior have degree eight. Well, since all of the vertices have even degree, this uh, graph does in fact have an Euler circuit. So it says it certainly is possible just to park at one place, hit every street exactly once, finish back where you started.